He knows everything Sonic's going to do, but that's not gonna help him, since Sonic knows everything he's going to do. Strange, isn't it? Metal Sonic is undeniably one of the greatest, if not the greatest robot in Dr. Eggman's automaton army. But how could Eggman create such an outlandishly powerful machine capable of standing as Sonic's equal? Well, what if I told you he didn't build him at all? I am the Sega Scourge, the Sonic theorist, tackling 25 years of classic and modern Sonic alike. Let's find out. The Sonic Theorist. I'm happy to say that today's episode was a requested theory by YouTube user Jose Uriostegui. Hope you enjoy it, man. It's a great subject. So, Metal Sonic. Now, despite this dynamic mechanoloid having a rebellious streak, Metal Sonic has clashed with Sonic on numerous occasions, confoundingly matching the Hedgehog's trademark speed and strength, even pushing past the limits of his own programming. But it always rang as illogical to me how the Doctor was capable of creating a robot that can keep up with the blue blur, and yet he never bothered to apply that same technology to his other creations. While many of his machines are formidable, most of them fall phenomenally short of Sonic's power and are ultimately destroyed effortlessly. So what makes Metal Sonic so substantially different? What factors in to his amazing ability to remain homogeneous to the blue blur? Why, if you'll pardon the phrase once again, does he know everything Sonic is going to do, to the point where he believes himself to be the one and true hedgehog? All these overlooked questions. Well, it's my belief, as well as the belief of some other groups online, that Metal is not simply another soulless machine, but rather, is Sonic's future self roboticized? Time paradox. But how does this theory even make any lick of sense, you ask? And to answer that question, we have to take a trip to the past, back where it all began. Sonic first came into contact with his metallic counterpart in Sonic CD on the geostationary Little Planet home of the mystical and anomalous Time Stones. These seven unexplained gemstones are likely the prime cause of several temporal irregularities across Little Planet, and also may be perhaps responsible for the planet's annual disappearance for 11 months a year. In Sonic CD, Eggman is attempting to harness the stone's power to change or manipulate the time stream and thus use them to terraform the planet in the distant past, long before Sonic's arrival, ensuring that the future will be under the Doctor's control as well. With this ever-present element of time travel centering the game's plot, the idea that Metal Sonic may have originated from the future isn't all fluff, perhaps sent back in time by Eggman to assist the efficacious Eggman of the past. Further backed up by the fact that when Sonic finally comes to fight, or rather, race Metal, the battle takes place canonically on Stardust Speedway's bad future evidenced by its appearance in Sonic Generations and its later appearance in Sonic 4 Episode Metal, showing us that a bad future timeline does exist. A future where Sonic failed to stop Dr. Eggman's plans, dooming himself and Little Planet along with him. Of course, that does not by any means imply that the future is set and that Sonic's fate is ultimately to be roboticized. Because as we know, Sonic 4 takes place long after Sonic CD, and Sonic is his same old wisecracking, whore-assing self, indicating to me that time in the Sonic universe is non-linear, always subject to change at some point, and break off into other time streams, meaning the bad future we witnessed in all these Sonic installments is that of an alternate future. This alternate timeline could still exist parallel to Sonic's own main timeline, meaning entities like Metal Sonic 
wouldn't automatically cease to exist. Much like how Silver's future in Sonic 06 seemed to remain destroyed despite the fact that we know Sonic and the team save the day in the end. And of course, if we're to believe Metal is in fact Sonic himself, our platinum-plated hedgehog would eventually have to come face to face with the fact that he's no longer the hero on the block. During the events of CD and Sonic 4, Metal was undoubtedly still under Eggman's control meaning he was unwittingly sent to the past against his will. Now, Metal Sonic is trapped in a reflection of his past and a future he never had, free to subconsciously witness the bionicle assassin he has become, but be unable to break free of the Doctor's restraint. The fallen hero can only watch as he causes the same chaos and destruction that he once fought to prevent watching as his friends recoil in fear towards the sight of him, and watching as another Sonic comes to stop him. The early stages of BPD and post-traumatic stress disorder would begin to take root. The only thing grounding Metal Sonic to sanity is the unrelenting belief that he is the real Sonic, and the hedgehog that stands before him is the fake. An unhealthy obsession with Sonic the Hedgehog begins to brew, as seen in the events of Sonic 4 Episode 2 and Episode Metal, after which Metal is confined to the final egg base to undergo repairs after his second defeat, as seen in Sonic Adventure. However, unbeknownst to the Doctor, the strange purple spherical artifact that Metal absorbed in Lost Labyrinth Zone has begun to take full effect on his hardware, allowing him to finally break free of Dr. Eggman's authority as well as giving him the new ability to copy the physical data of others. And by the time Sonic Heroes comes around, Metal Sonic has descended into megalomaniacal insanity, finally accepting what he is and taking full sovereignty over Eggman's army, crowning himself the master of all living things and aiming to terraform the Earth just like the little planet of his timeline. I mean, come on guys, it's hinted at in the final boss title. Metal Madness? But while some will say this sounds far too inherently villainous for something Sonic the Hedgehog would do, I see nothing villainous about it. What I see is acceptance of fear, heartache, alienation, and the possibility to be accepted once again. I mean, if everyone's a robot, Metal Sonic would no longer be alone, would he? kind of sheds a whole new light on things, doesn't it? Consider Metal's line from Sonic Heroes. See me as I am, no longer afraid of anything. No longer afraid of anything, implying that he was fearful of something before, perhaps distressed by the monster he'd become or daunted with the thought of how to approach his former friends. Furthermore, this implies that Metal Sonic feels fear and emotion, something a mere robot should be void of. But he's not just robotic, is he? And to add one final tidbit to scrutinize upon, in Heroes, Metal used his copycat ability to utilize and perfectly replicate the power of chaos control. While it may be a long shot, Aren't only living organisms capable of harnessing the Emerald's power? It may just be me, but let me make reference to Takal's infamous mantra, the enunciation of which goes as follows. The servers are the seven chaos. Chaos is power, power enriched by the heart. The heart is the controller. The Chaos Emeralds turn thoughts into power, we all know this. And while they can be used like batteries to power machines, initiating Chaos abilities is something else entirely. Then, wouldn't that signify that Metal is a living being with thoughts, a heart, and a soul? It's pure deliberation, but it's certainly strange when you think about it. And yes, I am aware that Emeril of the ancient Nocturnus clan is also capable of chaos abilities, but are you telling me that Eggman can create a machine that matches the legendary all-powerful Gizoid? When we know full well that the good Doctor has attempted to forge a replica before, in the form of Gemeril, but he was nowhere near a carbon copy of his predecessor, and was not capable of the same feats, being effortlessly defeated by the Doctor and and supersonic. As we know, the ill-fated metal would later appear in Sonic Rivals, once again back under the Doctor's control. But just like before, where there's smoke, there's fire. As the last time he appeared, he was again free of Eggman's reign in the events of Sonic Freeriders. As for Metal's current whereabouts, no one knows as of now. 
but it's safe to assume he's somewhere planning his next strategy. So the Sonic of a forgotten future long past will for now remain Metal Sonic. We'll continue to feel the scorn of antagonism, the isolation of abandonment, and the curse of wandering the earth in the shadow of himself. So what do you guys think about this theory? What is the truth about Metal Sonic's origin? Be sure to share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please show the channel some love by dropping a like and subscribing for more Sonic Theorist videos. Just quickly, as I said in the last video, I do take requests and requests are still open. Be sure to write in. And if you missed my theory about a whole universe inside the Chaos Emeralds, a link will be on screen right now for you to go see. From me, the Sega Scourge, the Sonic Theorist, thanks very much for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.